Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video we're going to take a look at the enhancements to Copilot controls in Power Apps Canvas. So we'll take a look at this new Copilot answer control that is available and how we can assign that to an existing data source such that when we go and click on it, we can get a summary of that information. So stick around because this truly is helpful, especially for managers, directors, executive teams who just want a quick summary of what that data holds and simply clicking on the Copilot button will provide that for them. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. The announcement of the Copilot answer control, which is currently in public preview, was made on April 3rd of 2024. And it is important for me to point out that currently this functionality will only support Dataverse tables, which means you can't go ahead and use other data sources such as SharePoint or Excel spreadsheet. And since data source is the only option, let me show you a table that I have created in Dataverse, uh, which I'm going to use for this example. I call that as my new asset requests. Um, and it already has about 50 rows of data over here, basically information about which asset has been requested, what's the asset type, what is the status, whether it is for a house or a office, uh, and then any of the existing quantities that are there. So now that I've introduced you to this new feature and shown you my Dataverse table, let's go into the studio and actually start leveraging those controls. So I'm in my Copilot studio and this is my Canvas app. In addition, for my data, I've connected to that Dataverse table that I just showed you. All right, so in this plus insert, if you click on the drop down and if you scroll down just a little bit, you will see the Copilot answer control, which is currently in preview. And if you don't for some reason, that's fine. Go to your settings. In your settings, you basically go to your support, click on edit. And on the edit under the authoring version, try to select the most recent one that you have because you may have something that is recommended. Go to the most recent one that is available to you in your tenant. And moment you go ahead and select it, save it. And after you go back into the studio, you will see this exact same option that I'm seeing over here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and create another little screen. So here, this is my main screen. I went down and duplicated the screen and I call this as my copilot screen. And the only things I've done changes is I've actually taken out this edit form. So that's all I did. See over here in my edit form, we actually go and scroll down. Uh, this is still the same big container that I have, these horizontal containers. And in it, I've gone ahead and added two other containers, basically just to maintain the responsiveness. Now on the right container, I'm going to first go ahead and add one copilot control that you should already be familiar with. And it's one right here. See the copilot preview? When I go and click on it, you will actually see that this control comes up. We can go ahead and assign that to a Dataverse table and make it a little bit more responsive. Yeah, so this is something which has been there before. This is something which has been here for a while. It is not new. However, I wanted to go ahead and add it over here so you can actually see some similarities between the two. So I'll keep this over here for now. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But now let's go to this container on the left and let's go and start inserting these new controls that are available. So the copilot answer, if I go and select on it, it comes in as one control, like a rectangular shape one, it's called summary. So I can go and move that up a little bit over here. And now we can go and customize its properties. On the right side where the properties are, the first thing I need to do is assign a data source to it. And remember, in our case, we only have one because that's all the connection that I made. So what I see, what I went ahead and connected over here is the exact same thing I see on the right side, which is the new asset request, the one that I just showed you. And if you had certain views in it as well that you want to specifically point out, you can do that over here. That's the beauty of using the Dataverse connection. Now, for my title, I'm going to go ahead and change that to something like this. And if I go and click outside, you'll see that got updated. It says it's a summary of asset type requests. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and actually add the question. And this is something that you want to go and do it ahead of time. So if I go and now click on it and actually clear it, the question I'm going to put is provide a summary of all the asset types requested because it also ties on with the title. Now, when I was actually playing with this, it almost felt like this is very similar to a prompt that you're doing. Not 100%, but almost there because you're actually going ahead and prompting this co-pilot control. What is the summary that I want to do? And you're prompting it by giving it some information. So that's basically what I felt when this question is very similar to a prompt. All right, so let's continue. Uh, in the show answer, there are two options. You can either go and do it immediately or after sending, basically after sending this question. 
And then all of these other ones are, are properties that you're familiar with. There is either you want to go and put it just as a display or you want to go and do as an edit. Edit means when you actually go and click on it, something happens in the on select. So we want to leave that as the edit. The advanced section has a whole bunch of other properties uh, that you're already familiar with. Things about what, what the height should be, if it's visible, width, X, Y, like we will actually be able to use all of that. In fact, I'm going to use the Y one for just a second. But the point I wanted to make is this wall part is not new. You're already familiar with it. And I'm glad that it was even provided for the Copilot control. All right, so I've gone and create the summary of asset type request Copilot. What I'm going to do is also add a second one. All right, so I'm going to make sure that I'm actually in this container. Come back to our insert, scroll down a little bit, go ahead and grab another answer. And I'm going to go and drag this down just a bit, little bit. It'll make sense in just a minute. For the summary part, I'll go and paste this one because this is now going to be summary of locations for asset requests. And the question is going to be very similar to actually the title. It's going to say, provide a summary of all the locations. And everything else looks good, so I won't go ahead and change it. Now what I'm going to do is go and click on save. The saving is complete. Let's go and test it. So the first one is summary of asset type requests. And these asset types, just so you understand what it is, is right over here. See the asset types is the laptop, table, monitors. I've got a bunch of these. So now when I'm asking for a summary, if I just go and click on it, it is going to give me a summary of all the asset types that are in that table. So right now it is going ahead and generating this output. And here's the summary it gives. It's like some of the asset types requested are keyboard with 10 requests, laptop with 10 requests, and monitor with 10 requests. All of these numbers are actually some values of this asset type in that table. And as you can see, this bottom controller is kind of overlapping it. So that's what I said that I'm actually going to be changing this one's Y a little bit. So over here, I can go ahead and change its Y position by actually coming into the advanced. And it's at about 203. Let me just go and bump it up to say 250 just to give us enough measure. But that's basically all it was is that these even these copilot controls have the same advanced properties as we have for any other control. So that part is not new. All right. So since I've got this one clicked over here, let's go and actually set it up as well. So its data source is also going to be the exact same one is a new asset request. Uh, we went in and basically added the title, which was good, the question, which was good as well. So let's go and test these all over again. It's good practice that I'll go and save it. So let me just go and finish that off first. Good. Let's go and click on play. And now I'll me click on this one again, the summary of asset type requests is generating the output, going ahead and comparing it with the data that we've actually got. And here it gives me a nice summary. Okay, we just saw this answer. Now summary of locations for asset requests. Let's see how it goes ahead and responds over here. What type of answer it is going to generate for this one. And it's actually making a lot of sense because it's very similar to the one on the top. The one on the top was giving us a summary of all the assets. Over here is the summary of all the requests giving us a number count. So some of the locations are home with 25 records and office with 25 records. And it makes sense because there's only two of them. And I have a total of this 10 plus 40, which is 50. So that's why this 25, 25 makes sense. It's just a quick way for me also to verify. Yeah, that these answers also are legitimate and pretty accurate. But hopefully you understand the beauty of this copilot answer because it's for a very specific question and you go ahead and give it that prompt so that when the user comes in, they click on it and they get an immediate answer to that. Other thing which I didn't show here is that instead of you clicking one at a time, you can go and click them at the same time. Um, so I'll just show that to you just as a demo. I'll go back in. Uh, I can go and click both of them. And so it'll start generating the output together. And it actually does that at the same time. So it's not that it, you know, only one can run at a time. No, you can click on both of them and both of them run and they give you that output over here. Now, even after creating the copilot answer controls, I want to also show you how this copilot will be helpful. For example, the one over here on the answer one, we said summary of asset type requests. But if I want to ask exactly what my new asset type requests are, I simply go and click on it. And it'll go ahead and populate that section. And I then go and click on enter. And now it is actually going and asking that question. And there you go. This details that we get from this copilot that we have a conversation with is in addition to this copilot answer control. So it might be helpful for you to actually add both of them. You can actually go ahead and use these ones, which just give you that quick summary. But based on the answer you've gotten over here, if the user wants the more details, well, you can go and get that from this copilot over here just by using natural language and communicating it. And it's pretty neat because you've got already some examples. So when I noticed this analyze, this analyze was very similar to the summary. 
But the ask, now the ask is very similar to us users actually having that conversation. So it was very important that I actually showed you what was the distinction between the two and how both of them work together. So I'm gonna summarize this video into three parts. First of all, the Copilot answer control feature is currently in preview. Preview means test, play, get yourself familiar with it. Just don't go production with it for now. Second, this is a summary. So when you go ahead and assign that to a Dataverse table, it gives you a summary of a very specific question that you're asking for. But then that leads me to the third part, is that the existing co-pilot where you actually have a conversation, that also works over there. It's not that if you use the co-pilot conversation, you should not use the co-pilot answer. In the demonstration I showed to you that how when you use that co-pilot answer, it might trigger other questions and the best way to get that answer is actually have that conversation. So the two of them actually work really well together. So hopefully this video was useful to you and you start getting ideas of where you can go ahead and leverage this Copilot control. And as always, keep using Power Apps with Copilot. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.